I think there are a few misconceptions when it comes to PC gaming and building a PC. For one, I think a lot of people who at least haven't ever built a PC think it's a lot harder than it is. You literally plug things in and screw things down. Obviously, there you gotta be careful with a few things, but for the most part, it's that simple. There's plenty of videos all over YouTube that can guide you through the process if you're doing it for the first time. Also, the other big misconception I think a lot of people have is to get a PC that will play new AAA title games at ultra or higher that you need to invest in the newest i7, get the best graphics card available, and all of the other best high-end options. That's not true. And today we're gonna to be proving that with what I think is a build that is very budget friendly for most gamers and will get them the results that they really desire. Today's video is brought to you by NZXT. Check out their S340 case. To learn more, check out the description down below. So to kick things off, what we really need to do is talk about what we have in this build, how much all of this will run you if you decide to do maybe a similar build, and what exactly you're going to get. We'll go over specs in a little bit, but first we need to cover what exactly is in this build. And first things first, we should kick things off with the case itself. It is the NZXT S340 that you heard me talk about just a second ago. It's a very good case. It's not NZXT's cheapest case, but it is a very, what I'd call budget-friendly case. It has plenty of room, plenty of spots for drives and storage and for expansion too in the future or just anything you need to fit in your case. Also very sleek and well-designed case in my opinion too. Very happy with it. Looks very good. Um, gonna be awesome. My friend's really gonna enjoy that when he gets his build. Um, so that's the case. What we've put inside the case though is let's start off with the processor. It is an Intel i5-6500 processor. Now, when it comes to processors, there's really two choices in my opinion if you're looking at the i5 range, which I think is perfect for gaming. Um, the i5 range, there's the 6500, which I really, really like. Um, that one you cannot overclock, um, which isn't a big deal um, for this build and really isn't a big deal for a lot of people. It has a really good performance for price comparative to the brothers that sit uh, around it and next to it. The other one you could get is the 6600K. Um, the 6600 itself, is a good processor, it's fine. Um, but if you're gonna go ahead and get one of those, get the K, get that, uh, the one you can overclock, you might get a little bit more longevity out of it um, if you get a motherboard that is capable of overclocking. You gotta make sure you do that. But once again, if you go with the K and you go with a motherboard that's gonna be able to overclock it, you're gonna be spending a little bit more money and you're gonna be kind of getting out of the range of which this video is in. So um, you gotta be conscious of that. So the 6500 was what we went with. It's a good choice. We also did put that on the MSI B150M Pro VD motherboard. Now, this motherboard is a micro motherboard, actually, and there's a few reasons why we did that. One, it's cheaper than a normal ATX motherboard. Um, it's not always the best reason to get something, don't get me wrong. Um, we knew with the process we were getting that it wasn't overclockable, and this board doesn't support overclocking, so there was no conflicts there. Um, he's never gonna run dual uh, video cards or really um, much more than what we have in this PC, um, so we weren't really worried about missing out on any expansion slots. This only does have two available slots for RAM. Not a big problem, once again, because what we decided to go with, which was G-Skill, Ripjaw, two times eight gigs of DDR4 at 2133 um, hertz. So he's got 16 gigs of RAM in this build. That's gonna be plenty for gaming. A lot of people always get confused on how much you need, which for gaming, at least eight, I'd say gets you safe. 16 is gonna be definitely plenty and good for uh, other programs and if you're doing any Adobe stuff. 32 is where you really know that you're, specif um, you're specifically needing more RAM for either RAM specific programs or if you're doing lots of After Effects or Premiere work, like, and I mean a lot. So having extra RAM for those reasons is good, but you don't really need much more than 16 for gaming, and we've got that in here, so no worries there. Um, as for hard drives, we went with a Radeon SSD, 120 gigabyte um, Series 3 hard drive. Um, really on sale, good price, good performance. This is actually an area of the build where you could probably save a little bit of money if you really wanted to. Um, I personally like doing a build with a solid state drive to have your OS and programs on um, so everything runs and boots very quickly. And then having another hard drive, a hard disk drive, we have a Seagate in here, a 7200 RPM, um, one terabyte kind of hidden back down in the bottom where it can be able to hold all of your games and all of your media. So you have a fast drive for your boot up and your programs and you have all your games and all of your media on one other drive. I think they pair together really well. If you wanted to save a little bit of money, yeah, you could take out the SSD. You wouldn't necessarily need it. Um, you lose out on a little bit of speed, but you might not notice. It may not be that big of a deal to you and you can save about 30 to 40 bucks, depending on if you were looking to save a little bit of money. Also, you could do the same thing on the case too. You could go with maybe a more entry level um, case 
um, step down. Although you're not going to probably get the plexiglass side to see into your computer. It's not the biggest deal, but sometimes that is nice. I mean, you paid for all those components. Why not take a look at them occasionally or show it off a little bit if you have a place to show your PC, um, wherever your setup may be. So you could save about 20 bucks there. So if you did those two things, you could save about 60 bucks. So saving a little bit. We'll go over one other spot too in a little bit too where you could save money. But um, that's most of the computer. Then we also have the video card, of course. What we decided to go there um, with was actually an RX 470 with eight gigabytes of GDDR5. Now, the eight gigabyte version of the 470 is not the one you see most of the time. Most of the time you see a four gigabyte version. Um, this one we decided to go for because its price and performance seems to be incredibly good. And um, I'm actually gonna be doing a comparison uh, of this card against my card. Um, real soon on the channel too. So be sure to check that out coming up um, to see the comparison. But we'll, we'll talk about this card and what it's capable of in just a second with uh, some of our benchmarking and our numbers we ran in some games. And then all of this is being powered by an EVGA 650 watt power supply. We went with a fully modular one. You could save a little bit of money too there if you didn't want to do fully modular, but um, I think it's nice to only use the cords that you need and not have to worry about extra cords that you have to tuck away or hide. Um, it's just cleaner. It's easier to work with. I like it. it. seems to work very well. But that is the build itself. That's everything inside of it. Um, as of right now, the, uh, the making of this video, you can get all of these parts for sub $800 as a full build. Like I said, if you wanted to save a little bit more money, you probably could get that at least $100 cheaper, maybe even $150 cheaper, and you could be sitting pretty uh, at maybe around $600 or a little less than $600 for a pretty powerful build, which we'll go over in just a second, like I said, with those numbers. But overall, it's really not that difficult to do this, put these things together. Um, if you've never done it before, um, there's some very helpful websites like PC Parts Picker. In fact, down below in the description, there will be a PC Parts Picker link that will link you to the components of this build specifically, and you can see how that adds up currently. Um, or it's a great place to just you know throw parts together, see what's compatible if you don't know exactly what's compatible. But with a little bit of research and time, it's really not that difficult. As for our tests, we decided to run everything at 1080p, which is what this build's mostly for, and that's what most everyone is still playing their games in. I know there's few people probably playing on 2K and 4K, but I think about 90% of everyone gaming still is on 1080p. So um, we're gonna be running all of our tests on that. We started things off with Overwatch on Epic, which averaged 89 frames a second, which I find very reasonable, very good. Next, we ran Tomb Raider, or Rise of the Tomb Raider for that. Um, first, we ran it on maxed out with FXAA. It averaged 55 frames a second, which is a little bit lower than the 60 FPS I like to typically shoot for. Um, but then we did some tweaks. Very high with FXAA, it ran at 62 frames per second. So just bumping it down barely changed it to uh, get what we wanted. And its default setting of high actually ran the game at 75 frames a second. So um, default, it runs fine. And even on max, it ran fine at 55. Next, we ran Dirt Rally. And we ran it on Ultra with two times MSAA. And it averaged 89 FPS, which is definitely right where you want it to be. Um, for kicks, we actually took it down to high and ran it with eight times MSAA. And it actually averaged 79 frames a second. So lost 10 frames, but we got more anti-aliasing, which uh, smoothed out all the corners and edges and made everything look really pretty. So uh, that was a pretty good option. And then finally, we ran Grand Theft Auto 5. We ran it um, on its default high, very high settings, and actually got 95 as an average. Then we took everything to maxed with the advanced settings turned on and got an average of 83 FPS. So overall, I think we got pretty reasonable marks for pretty new AAA games um, on, a, on a newer card, but kind of a budget card, you could say, um, because this is not anywhere near the most expensive cards you can get. But it also is no reason that you would need the most expensive card to get these numbers. For example, let's just go there. Like the GTX 1080, yeah, it's a great card. It's a fantastic card. But that's a card that you should get if you're really looking to do 4K gaming or maybe a lot of VR. This card actually falls under being VR ready, but that 1080 itself costs as much as this entire build. So you have to kind of think what you really need versus what you want. This card at one third the price will get you performance that I think most gamers would be incredibly happy with on high and on ultra settings for pretty much every game out, or at least on the market available at 1080p. So um, I think people just have some misconceptions, like I said earlier, about what it takes to really run games at um, what I think are respectable rates. All those numbers for this card and this price of this build, insanely respectable in my opinion. And in fact, if you start to actually go overkill on your build for what you're doing, um, let's say you do buy a 1080 and you do only play games um, at 1080p, 
I'm, you probably a little bit overkill, honestly. A little bit overkill, unless you're using it for some other things like rendering or who knows what you might be using it for. But overall, um, pretty solid build for the price. Um, everything's down below in the description if you want to know more about it. If you want to chat about PC stuff, we do have the Curse Voice server. Um, we have multiple games set up in there where we can chat. Also, there is a PC tech section. So if you have any questions, um, if you're looking to maybe build a PC or if you have any questions about any kind of tech stuff, keyboards, mice, anything, um, you should hit it up. There's plenty of people in there to offer their opinions. I'm usually in there too to answer questions if anybody has any. So be sure to join that. If you guys could leave me a comment down below about this video, what you thought, um, I would greatly appreciate it and would really like to know what you think. Also, if you could leave me a like, that'd be great too. But that's going to be this video for now. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.